hello everyone welcome back to geeks for geeks my name is muskan agarwal and today we have mukul with us and he is going to share a lot of tips and insights around sang interviews around various type of colleges and uh, what issues did he face during his placement journey so i have a lot of questions in mind with me but uh, before i start asking them mukul can you give us a brief introduction about yourself so that the audience connects with you better Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Khan. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mukul Kumar. Currently working at one of the bank companies, Amazon. It is basically, and I came from a tier three college where uh, we where the coding culture and stuff wasn't so good. So we had to struggle a lot, and still, uh, uh, I feel good like uh, me and a lot of my batchmates are still able to get great jobs at great companies. and uh, yeah i think it was quite a good journey to be honest like we did a lot of things in our colleges tried random stuff failed over different things at the end things went well we are working at different different uh, big tech companies uh, earning good money making something building something building uh, a, a, a product like uh, and reaching it to audience so it feels nice to do all this thing yeah that's kind of a very basic introduction about myself uh, i think we'll be talking about more things in later on okay right. so as you talked about company so do you think that uh, the college or like did your college matter at any point of time while you were applying for a fan company okay so let's take any example of uh, any tier 1 college let's say iit or or take any tier 3 college uh, the benefit that the tier 1 folks have is like the company basically visits their campus and uh, that's the only benefit that they have so company will be visiting every year they know how things are going to be and they'll apply give the test and uh, sit in rounds that's how things are going to be but uh, when uh, when we are inside a tier 3 or tier 4 or a, or a not so famous college where companies don't visit i guess things uh, are kind of bad over there because firstly people don't even know like they can crack this kind of companies even if someone knew it like what's the part to that what are the things that they have to study it there is quite a lot of uncertainty like if we will be able to apply to a company in fact in my scenario i didn't even knew that i'll be able to apply to any of the big companies off campus or anyhow but uh, to be honest i just had uh i just had a dream like uh, okay uh, whatever is going to happen i'll be able to tackle that but if if i am able to get any single test or any single interview it's my responsibility to prepare myself beforehand so that if i'm sitting in that interview i have to crack that single interview i don't have multiple chances so tier 1 folks have multiple chances so like microsoft is going to visit then apple then google then other companies i have seen uh, like uh, in delhi technological university microsoft visited three times in single year so like it was only a company is giving that much chances more than 200 product based companies visit there and uh, in my scenario around five to six companies visited my campus with a maximum package of i guess 10 lakhs and most of the people were not able to do that so there's uncertainty over there but if we are preparing well if we are brushing up our dsa skills if we have a bit of confidence and guidance i think everyone can uh, do this in that scenario the tier of your college doesn't matter the tier of your mentality your friend circle that's the main thing which matters that is right i think in college uh, as you mentioned that it is very important that you surround yourself with people who have the same mindset as you yeah. and same goals as you right exactly. so, uh, talking about that can you tell us like how was the coding culture in your college and like when how like how did you start coding basically a little bit about your coding journey and how is the coding culture in your college okay so when i joined my college i was told that like uh, the maximum package is around uh, 10 lakhs that was offered by microsoft for a support kind of engineer role and uh, like if if you are able to get a job of 3 lakhs then you are great that is like the maximum that most of the people gets and and uh, like 3 lakh is uh, i don't think it's my piece of cake so i i thought of like let's try something else how can i improve my skills what are the things needed so i i used to uh, go 
different colleges i used to visit different campuses different coding clubs and see how things are going over there so i remember uh, i along with one of my friend named yashraj we used to bunk classes uh, visit different college cultures and see how things are going over there and uh, then we met a couple of good people who are who are working on different different companies and they shared us like hey the interviews are like that you have to study dsa and every one can crack interviews if you are good at dsa you are going to get a job so you just have to like improve yourself and uh, do things so that's how my first year started but uh, we didn't knew what to exactly study what kind of coding that we need to do so i just jumped into machine learning python it was point, kind of trending at that instance so we just spend our all of time over there and ultimately ending up with uh, nothing in our hand just a single project and uh, then we knew like machine learning is not my uh, kind of thing i have to i have got an interest in android development i started developing android applications i jumped into open source uh, fortunately i was able to crack google summer of code in my second year i became a mentor organization spending my time in open source and google summer of code was uh, like the first thing which uh, which basically helped me to push myself and push the people around myself like uh, i can do this thing so i guess my friends will be able to do that as well so i started a community called google developer student club i started teaching student created a group of uh, people and we started like uh, it was the first time an actual community was building inside our college and we were just pushing ourselves to like get that the tier 3 mentality left at home and like do something productive over here bunk your classes spend some time over here have some good discussions we used to invite some great people working at different places and we used to like get motivated and share that thing with people so that's how uh, like if i was able to do a single thing small single thing i tried to share that thing with other people and the next year i was able to see like a lot of mentees of mine went into google summer of code so that's how things like uh, like started booming up and uh, i think i'm not the f- uh, i'm not completely responsible for all the culture and stuff but uh, i can say my batch like whoever was with me in that year those people were actively looking at different different places and we were able to build a community a place an environment to start from and uh, there was a time where uh, we used to get a package of 3 lakhs per annum right now people from my college are joining with a package of 1.5 crores 2.5 crores in different different companies and different different countries off campus so i feel it's kind of a good thing that we started something which is still going on right i think it is a very great initiative taken by you like you created try to create a community if it was not already existing there so yes it is a very great initiative and then talking about tier of college even i think that it is just a mentality that uh, like even i have many tier 3 friends uh, tier 3 college friends who have like like gotten into big bank companies so i think tier of college is just a mentality like if you have the will to get into big companies like you will yeah. find yeah yes. completely agree with you muskan then uh, talking about your preparation strategy can you tell us like what resources did you follow since there are so many resources available on internet sometimes as a student it gets really overwhelming because you know you start with something then a friend comes and he or she says that you know i am doing this then you jump on to that then another yeah. friend says that do this so it gets really overwhelming so what resources did you follow and what was your preparation strategy before the interview okay so continuing the story uh, when i did google summer of code i knew gsoc is not going to land me a job at any place i have to do some like basically i have to improve my data structure algorithm skills uh, i knew what dsa is i have used stack queues but uh, i i wasn't like doing a proper problem solving or a proper competitive coding in that so after gsoc my next aim was to do that so that i can get a, get an internship or a full time job in future so i started like ultimately dsa is what uh, exactly like uh, this this is something that's going to get you a lot of jobs right dsa will uh, land you at facebook amazon apple netflix google microsoft everywhere if you have great problem solving skills you'll be able to track all these interviews on the basis of that 
so at this point since uh, i was leading a community i was in touch with a lot of people i knew that this is the thing that i have to spend my time on so i i just took a lot of courses from different different places uh, me and my friend used to buy courses on discount online courses one of my friend was doing an offline course so we used to consult with him how things are going over there we used to read different different stuff like everything was completely uh, started from scratch no guidance nothing so at that moment uh, like uh, i felt like youtube is a great place uh, i started learning from youtube there were a lot of lectures and things over there lead code is a website uh, there are a lot of competitive coding websites right uh, where we can do all those things so code chef is a platform where we basically participate in contests and do uh, stuff i wasn't uh, able to score good ranks of this over there i didn't had good practice uh, back then but uh, Geeks for Geeks was something which helped me to be honestly. Uh, like uh, every single thing, whatever I was looking for was available over there. And you know, I still remember when I opened the first web page of Geeks for Geeks, uh, I was studying an algorithm called Kedane algorithm. And that was the first algorithm. And I was like, uh, okay, I solve this problem by this method, and this algorithm is doing it like in this complexity. and i i shared with all of my friends hey dude uh, can you solve this problem hey dude can you solve this problem something like that uh, that's how things started i used to bunk my classes sit in a library discuss questions with my friends uh, and uh, learn things from youtube code there sit in library again discuss things over there that's kind of a process like there are basically two ways like you can join a course you can do all things in a structured way or you can uh, do start from scratch explore everything whatever likes you i am a kind of person who like to go for the scratch part because i think that's uh, where you learn more so this is what i was doing i uh, i learned from everywhere like i name any edtech platform i think i have used their uh, product or i have used their services any uh, time in my uh, college so yeah that's how like dsa is the thing but uh, there are multiple places you can start from my suggestion would be just stick to a single place only if you are able to stick to a single resource single website single place that would be great because you will be able to grasp more things and you are not going to solve a single question everywhere right i absolutely agree with you and as you mentioned like on youtube everything is available in case someone does not uh, want to buy a paid course the thing is that it is not structured otherwise everything even while i was preparing for my interviews i used youtube like so like i could not uh, find even a single thing that was not available and yes so if you're a college going student and you do not like you, you want some free resources then i think youtube is a great platform correct uh then next we are talking about hiring fresh graduates so i've seen that facebook and google or another big tech companies generally do not hire fresh graduates so can you tell if there are any particular opportunities that the freshers who are watching this can look out for okay so every year every year facebook hire third year uh, students off campus for their internships there are software developer internships software engineer intern and there is product uh, engineer intern i guess so there are two openings if you are in your third year look for let's say you are just enter, entered in your third year and the months are september october november in those uh, areas facebook is going to hire interns for their uh, like base location london and i don't know for which which location but uh, there are multiple openings over there now let's talk about google google hire every single year google hire uh, like google organizes uh, their fresh graduate hiring for every batch so let it be 2019 20 21 23 24 any batch they are going to organize this off campus hiring drive everyone can apply over there everyone gets the test link no referral needed nothing is needed there if you are able to clear the test you will be sitting in the interviews and if you have prepared well you will be able to clear the interviews as well so it was not the case earlier but companies have started uh, showing faith in off campus hiring so this is what i am able to see these days like google is massively hiring like not for just indian locations for foreign locations as well uh, one of my junior got into google london she is from 
2022 batch and it was completely off campus a lot of people if you look on linkedin uh, right now uh, just the joining of google has just begun so if you check on linkedin there will be a lot of posts about google this guy joined this position this position that position so google india is expanding uh, facebook hires i have seen facebook hiring interns i'm not sure about how does they hire uh, the full time part so i'm not sure about how full time thing is going to but uh, i can say the tech uh, industry the tech stuff is like kind of in a boom place if if you are into tech if you have good skills you will be landing into these companies very nicely right correct so like viewers who are watching this can look out for the opportunities that mukul just mentioned and i'm sure that there might be many more opportunities as well so keep checking that particular company's career page or uh, whatever portal they have and you will get to know uh then the next thing is how important is dsa because i have seen certain companies ask questions on projects as well and then there are theory subjects such as data communication dpms so apart from that do you think like what should we focus more on like should we focus more on dsa or project part or theoretical subject part or college cgpa what is important okay. about uh, kind of a very nice question that every beginner have uh i used to have this question as well uh because dsa is uh, something that i felt it is difficult i was uh, into more project and development side but later on i understand it's important and i uh, jumped to dsa so just one sentence uh dsa is the most important thing to be honest most 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 important thing if you want to get into any fang or any big tech company or any heavily based or uh, uh, heavily funded indian startup any big company who pays well who have a good culture i am sure they will be having dsa interviews somewhere and talking about big companies facebook amazon google all most like 90% of their interviews are based on dsa if you are on a senior position let's say sd2 or sd3 then they have system design interviews and uh, but for like uh, sd1 position which is for fresher 0 to 2 ex year experience the system design rounds are not uh, there so if if i have to rank all these things like what do we have to study so on top it's dsa it's not just dsa it's basically problem solving using dsa so you are given a problem you are able to solve it and code it using the knowledge of data structures and algorithms after that then it comes object oriented programming which is low level design or solid principles we can say this is something that uh, google sees in your code they want to use these things when you're coding then uh, we came with uh, dbms because no one's going to ask you dbms directly but it is a subject and i am from an ec branch i had to study this uh, outside like i didn't had uh, dbms in my subject curriculum so dbms then and then we have uh, operating system and computer network apart from all these all these things your project are going to help your resume getting shortlisted and your previous internships are going to help you in your discussion so let's say uh, let's take an example of uh, google so first four interviews are completely technical completely based on dsa but the googliness round the googliness round is completely based on your communication skills your behavior and your project they expect that you have prepared two projects at least about which you can talk so projects are something to like there's something to uh, differentiate if if i have two candidates who both are like good in uh, coding competitive competitive coding and stuff I'll, i'm going to choose the one which have a uh, better which have built better projects and communicated it to me very nicely so ultimately dsa is still on the top yes as you mentioned that communication and the last round is important even i agree with that so like i'm also interning right now and i understand the importance of communication and you know how to work in a team so yes that round is very important because i've seen people clear all the technical rounds and everything but uh, sometimes people are not able to clear the googliness round or the hr round yeah. so that is equally important uh, for any company 
right then uh, talking about the tech stack as you mentioned that you know like you started with machine learning so there are there are so many things that we can do like there is machine learning android development development yeah. so like which tech stack should a person focus on if you know he or she is specifically planning for uh, aiming for some fan companies or like is there any particular tech stack that we should follow or any we can go with anything got your point so it's another another nice yeah. question like a lot of people ask me this question like what kind of tech stack should i choose uh, like yeah. i'll suggest go with the flow whatever suits you go with that uh, if you are comfortable with web android machine learning web3 whatever uh, you are suitable with go with that ultimately you have to talk about that project ultimately you have to explain the tech stack that have that you have used and you will be able to explain all those things if you have invested your time very nicely over there it's not like uh, you will see some youtube videos and same or write the same code and voila you have a website ready it's not like not like that so i had an interest in android development uh, i knew android is not going to get me a job or something but i i like the fact like i write some code i hit run button and i was able to see the application running in my mobile phone so that was quite fascinating to me so that's how i started and uh, I had an interest in Android development. That's why I was able to crack Google Summer of Code and build great things over there as well. But if you, uh, if you feel like, uh, if you need a preference, if you still need looking for a preference, I'll suggest web development on the top, Android development, and then we have machine learning, and then we have Web three. Uh, reason being, if you are going to join any company, mostly you will be working on web part, like let's say back end or front end or something related with that. and there might be a possibility that you'll get into a team where android is being used over there so second is android then a uh, machine learning is quite rare companies don't hire machine learning engineers uh uh like they don't hire bachelors for that position they look for uh, m tech or phd people or people who have done who have like years of research so they look for those people and web3 is quite immature i would say it's kind of a fun or uh, it's, it's like you are building good things you have a nice project in your resume but ultimately web3 is not being used at a uh, big tech companies right so you won't be using that experience exactly so this would be my preference but go with your flow if you feel like web3 is nice go with that build a really great project you'll be able to explain it very nicely in the interviews Yes, I hundred percent agree with you. Just one thing, like if someone who is watching this is in his first year or I've just started with college, I will suggest you to try everything and then decide yeah. what do you go forward with. Because even in my first year, I I did web development, Android development, ML, and then eventually I decided that okay, web dev is something that interests me. So let me just go with that. So you know, just try everything and then see what interests you. But yes, obviously, if someone is in his third year or fourth year then we do not have that much of time to explore yeah. then maybe you can set your preferences correct then the next thing is uh, sometimes while preparation you know the motivation is always there like you know sometimes while we, while i'm solving a dsc question it is not i'm not able to see the final outcome so people or students generally get demotivated or suppose i'm building a project and you know i'm stuck at some error so how do you yeah. keep your motivated throughout the journey and you know consistency is i think very important while i think in dsa consistency is i think the most important thing so yeah. how do you keep motivated and consistent throughout the journey okay so i'll start with a quote which says uh, surround yourself with the people who are on same goal so this was my scenario as well uh, i had a good friend who were motivated to one goal only like we want to get a good job we want to become one of the best engineers across the globe this was our aim and whenever we used to stuck uh, like this thing motivated us so i remember uh, i was in my second year and uh, i got to i was looking at the placement sheet of our college so the maximum package was of 10 lakhs from microsoft i don't know about how the things were and exactly uh, on off campus or, or or on campus i didn't know about all those things but i was sitting with two of my friends saurabh sharma and uh, yashrat singh and we all said a single thing that uh, if one person from our college is going to join uh, this uh, highest package then that person is going to be me and same happened with yash and saurabh as well and that's how 
or like the synergy was maintained we created a group and that group is still alive we still sometimes code over there i remember when uh, we were pair coding we used to give virtual contest and i knew if i'm if uh, yashraj is able to solve that question i am able to going to solve that question as well i have to invest anything whatever i have used my complete mind over there so a good friend circle uh, like that is uh, going to be like uh, a very helpful thing and apart from that your goal should be very 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 narrow down and very clear uh, in my scenario it was like becoming the best engineers getting a great job this was my uh, scenario i thought of getting a job of 20 lakhs plus at least like ultimately we all were able to do that but the thing was uh, if your goal is not clear you will be able to see like okay let me do try mba let me go for mtech let me try for ms let me drop out let me start a startup let me create a community let me build a uh, like uh, join my father's business let me do some coding like if you have all those multiple options open uh, there might be a possibility that you will be spending wasting your time over there if you don't have time or uh, sharpen up sharpen up like narrow down complete your goal what you exactly want to do in your life if you have that goal aim like that is clear in your mind you will be able to do everything very nicely but if you don't have that thing you will be skipping dsa next time you will be skipping a uh, project next time you will be skipping something and when the time comes when we when the interviewer is looking for all those things you won't have anything to say about it right so a good a good group that's going to motivate you that's going to push you up whenever uh, you are about to cry whenever you are about to fail uh, and uh, secondly have a nice goal yeah yes i think uh, i completely agree with you like even i believe on having surrounding myself with people who have the same mindset and goals so like uh, yes also any other uh, you know tips that you have for the aspirants who are watching this or who have their interviews lined up maybe so because you know the placement season is coming companies are going to have start already started going to colleges and so the interviews have also started so any tips that you would like to give to the people who have their interviews lined up okay so uh, my tip would be like spend if if you have your interviews lined up then i'm going to say this like spend dude uh, whatever you have spend 10 hours a day 15 hours a day whatever possible and uh, like if if you have a straight goal if you want to join that company uh, apply for that prepare well like don't feel like you won't be able to do that you won't be able to do this and that i i remember like cracking amazon was a big thing when i was uh, in my college time and uh, i i never thought like i'll be i won't be able to do it like me and my friends we were under skilled uh, but we thought like hey it's, we'll do that it's not like a very big thing so get some confidence level the interviewer is going to help you uh, the interviews are basically to hire people not to fire them so if you have your skills down if you have a uh, thing ready you'll be getting a job not in this company not there's a possibility that you might fail your google interviews your facebook interviews amazon interviews but there will be a company which is going to uh, give you a great job if you have skills and you can switch any companies don't demotivate don't get demotivated with like very small things right i remember in my placement season that company came in uh, there was the highest package that a company offered was 10 lakhs i sit sat for the interviews i cleared online tests i was able to clear all the technical interviews all the discussion uh, i was i failed at the hr interview because they uh, they told me that uh, i am more kind of a technical guy and i am going to leave their company in 3 months so this mm. is the reason that they gave me and they didn't select it so i was like this was the best opportunity that my college can give and i have lost that now i have nothing lined up in uh, complete one year so at, i was completely broke uh, things were really bad over there but i was still preparing with my friends still doing dsa still uh, preparing for uh, a good interview that i wanted to join uh, fortunately i was able to get into an interview and i cracked that in first attempt so there might be possibly you fail 10 interviews 20 interviews 15 interviews nothing is uh, nothing is like uh, going to like stop you 
right if you have a goal ready have things i'll, I'll suggest you to spend whatever you have 10 hours 15 hours whatever you can do study for right thing and like do whatever you want to do it's not like no uh, you can't do this can't do that your college peer doesn't matter your friends matter your environment matter you, whatever you are studying that matters if you are failing into an interview learn whatever the mistakes were improve in the next one and okay. things will be nice Yes, definitely. That is one great piece of advice. I think you should have uh, faith on yourself and keep trying. It is not like you fail in one interview and then you are like that. Okay, up. Like there is nothing after this. Keep trying, and you will definitely land in your dream job. Uh, with that, I will end this webinar. It was great interacting with you, Mukul. It you shared some great tips. I wish it could help a lot of viewers who are watching this and a lot of students who are in their first year second year or third year itself yes so thank you so much mukul for coming to geek geeks and sharing about your journey thank you so much muskan thank you so much for inviting at geeks for geeks thank you